All right, so welcome back to Transcended. So in this video, I'm going to take you over electrochemistry past papers compiled questions. Okay, so look at that question there. And um, let me just actually show you the, the all other questions that you, you expect to in this video. Okay, so the questions are quite a number. Um, these are a compilation of past paper questions, all possible questions under electrochemistry that you can come across have all been answered, okay, in this video. So all the way up to, should be up to 19 questions actually, yeah. So let me take you over, over all of them, okay. So let's get started. An electrochemical cell is shown in the diagram. In this cell, the amount of copper in the electrodes is much greater than the amount of copper ions in the copper sulfate solution. Okay? Explain how the salt bridge D provides an electrical connection between the two electrodes. So, if you've learned, um, I believe you have learned electrochemistry, so you understand that uh, this is a wire, that's an ammeter, and through the wire we have movement of electrons, this is a sword bridge, okay, that's why it's actually mentioned in that part. Then you understand that in such a cell, we also have, uh, we have the cathode and the anode and whatnot, okay. These are called electrodes, okay. So when you say, in this cell, the amount of copper in the electrodes, they are referring to these parts, okay, the metal parts that are being dipped in the solutions, is much greater than the amount of copper ions in the copper sulfate solutions. Okay, so now now we understand. So we've got two sides, and uh, the only link that we have between the sides are the wire and the sword bridge. Okay, so the sword bridge, the issue there is to allow ions to pass through it. Okay, so that's what completes the, the circuit there. So explain how the sword bridge D provides an electrical connection between the two electrodes. So we can say ions can move through it. We can say it as uh, mobile ions or free ions. Okay, that is the simple reason there. It allows the flow of ions from one side of the solution to the other side. Then B, suggest why potassium chloride would not be a suitable sort for the salt bridge in this cell. Now, when you look at potassium chloride, now in, in our solutions, what do we have present? So we have copper, copper, copper sulfate. Okay. Now, this copper sulfate, of course, is going to be broken down to copper 2 sulfate, copper 2 ions, okay, like that. So in the solution, we have the presence of that guy there. So there is a possible reaction between the chlorine and the copper 2 plus. So the simple reason is the chloride ions may react. In fact, will react with copper ions. Okay. So what will end up being formed would be something like uh, copper, something like that. Eh? Okay. So that's what we don't want. So um, copper chloride would be formed, so it would reach to interference. Okay. Then uh, C. In the external circuit of this cell, the electrons were actually flowing, flow through the ammeter from right, right to left. Okay, suggest why the electrons move in this direction. So why is it that, in fact, in some questions that may actually ask you to say, where do you expect the electrons to move? Now, if for this kind of a cell we have, we are dealing with the same solution. Okay, so we've got copper sulfate a solution in both sides. So it's a matter of concentration now. Okay, so why is it that electrons are going to flow from a side where we have, uh, a side where we have, a lower concentration to a side where we've got a higher concentration. There are a lot of ways of thinking about this. Okay. So think of this. 
oil and rig. So what did we say? We said oxidation is what? Oxidation is a loss of electrons. So the side that we need to reduce is where there's our concentration, right? So this side has to be reduced. So we can reduce by gaining. Reduction is gain of electrons. So this side has to be oxidized by doing what? By losing electrons. Okay? So you can put that in many, many, many ways. Okay? So one simple reason is because the copper sulfate solution in the left hand electrode is more concentrated. Okay? Which is actually something that is... Uh, that is visible, right? In the left hand, it's more concentrated, so electrons have to move to go and reduce it. Okay. So what happens in terms of reduction um, is this: when we say there's a R concentration on this side, what we imply is we've got more copper plus ions in the solution. Okay. So the only way that we can reduce how many of them how many they are in the solution is by actually gaining electrons. So if they gain electrons, there will be now formation of what? Of copper solid, which implies a reduction now in the concentration. So that's why that happens. Okay? So those are some of the ways that you can actually put it. Or you can also talk about the signs. You say the left hand electrode is, uh, is, is positive. Okay? Based on what you're saying and what not, but basically that's how you answer C. D says explain why the current in the external circuit of this cell falls to zero after the cell has operated for some time. So why is it like that? Why is it that the current in the external circuit falls to zero after the cell has operated for some time? It's a very, very simple question. So eventually after the cell has been operating, the copper ions um, in each electron will be at the same concentration. Okay, so after the cell has been operating for some time, the concentration of the copper ions will be the same in both electrodes, both the left and the right hand side. So there will be no that EMF for that difference. So there will be no flow of electrons any longer because of equal concentrations on both sides. Alright, so let's look at this part of the question 1 E. So we are told the simplified electrode reactions in a rechargeable lithium cell are given. We've got for electrode A, B, okay, then we are told B is uh, the negative electrode. The EMF for this cell is 2.9 volts. Use this information to calculate a value for the electrode potential of electrode B, which we are not given. Okay, before even going to the writing of the equation below there, the, the idea here or the concept at hand here is very, very simple. Okay? So, the basic idea is when you look at the galvanic cell, which is the case in this case, um, the negative electrode is the anode. Okay? So if you've watched my video on the galvanic cell, the equation that we reverse is for the anode. Okay. So in a galvanic cell, the anode, this is where electrons are emitted. That's why it's the negative part. That's where oxidation occurs. So the formula for determining the E cell or the EMF is the cathode subtract the value of what? The anode. So the E cell is 2.90 volts. The cathode is the other one, negative 0 0.15. And then for the anode, we can call it B. We don't know. So if you try to determine the value, you're going to end up with B being on the left, and then you end up with 0 0.15 minus 2.90. Okay? So that's where we are ending up. Now, grab your cacata there. This is going to give you negative three point negative three point zero five. Okay. So this is the reduction potential of this reaction. Okay. Then 
The second part says write an equation for the other reaction that occurs when the lithium cell is being recharged. So in its galvanic form, the one that I'm from considering, that's the discharge when it's operating. Okay, so that's discharge. So when it comes to discharge, um, what we can write here is we maintain the the reduction reaction just as it is on top there. The one that was occurring on the cathode. Okay. Then the one that was occurring on the anode, which is oxidation reaction, we're supposed to reverse it. Uh, it becomes lithium and then lithium plus plus an electron. I need to indicate that's also a plus there. So the spectator ions can be cancelled out the ones that are on the opposite sides. Then so you can also see an electron there as a spectator. So overall, the overall re discharge reaction is lithium plus manganese 2, giving us lithium manganese, like that. So this is the discharge reaction. Now the recharging, which is the opposite, should start with that. Okay, so you now know what to write. Okay. That should be your final answer. Then suggest why the recharging of the lithium cell may le may lead to release of carbon dioxide in the in the atmosphere. Okay, so when it comes to recharging, electricity for recharging the cell may come from power stations, right? So those power stations they do some burning of they may do some burning of fuel. Okay. Yeah, that's the basic simple answer. So recharging may just be done in that way using electricity. So yeah.